Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, uh, the organization, for the opportunity to talk about uh, this work on uh, impact of uh, dark energy perturbations on the growth index. Um, so, here, okay. Um, the outline is more or less like this. Uh, we'll talk a, a bit, make a brief review about uh, redshift space distortions, the growth rate, and the growth index. Um, then how this can be used as a tool to study cosmic acceleration. And finally, show the impact of clustering dark energy on, on the growth index. So since 1929, we know about uh, uh, cosmological redshifts. Um, so if you have galaxies receding from us. You can associate that uh, some redshift z. But of course, uh, the universe is not uh, uh, homogeneous. So if you, if you take redshifts near some, some agglomeration, uh, Virgo cluster, for, for instance, some objects here, some galaxies here, do not follow Hubble law. So this is due to the peculiar velocities they, uh, these galaxies have around this massive object. So there is peculiar redshifts, and this might affect um, large-scale structure and how we observe this. And in fact, uh, we, we can do linear theory to explain this kind of effect. So uh, we find the redshift space distortions, which is pretty easy. Um, so we get uh, Newtonian equations, uh, fluctuations for matter, velocity, and uh, uh, potential. So we plug continuity equation, Euler equation, Poisson equation. Uh, this admits quite simple uh, uh, solutions. So this D is uh, the growth uh, factor, uh, uh, which we can say is dependent from A. Then if we take the derivative, the logarithmic derivative of the growth, uh, we may call this the growth rate. Then after we can associate this with the uh, continuity equation. Um, but uh, galaxies may have uh, some bias uh, in relation to, to matter, so we, uh, we should include some, some bias factor here. And then uh, from this, we can define the beta, which will actually appear in the Kaiser formula uh, for the distorted uh, power spectrum in redshift space. So these peculiar velocities are related to the growth uh, rate and also the bias, it also enters here, so we also have to take care of that. And then, uh, of course, if we get information from that and a theory for that, we can measure this uh, beta and then the evolution, how matter evolves uh, in the universe. Okay, um, some examples uh, of growth index. Uh, if we study the matter-dominated universe, science of the Sita model, we get F1. Uh, the function d uh, goes as a, so we get one. Uh, if we study lambda CDM model, uh, we can parameterize f uh, as uh, omega m to the power gamma. So this gamma is actually the growth index. Uh, it's quite a uh, good approximation for f. Lambda CDM is gamma 0.55. Uh, actually, many times this value is regarded as the GR value, what you may find in, in many uh, uh, models uh, with, where gra gravity is described by general relativity. But you can move away a bit from lambda CDM and also study smooth dark energy, dynamical dark energy, but uh, smooth. And then you have some correction to that where here uh, W1 is uh, the value of the equation of state at redshift one. We have this uh, correction for, for the growth index. And then, so this is for GR models, okay? So you can also uh, study modified gravity as, as to try to explain cosmic acceleration. And for this particular Starobinsky model, it was computed in this paper, the, how the growth index changes. So there is some scale dependence here, but it's quite mild. And, uh, but here is the lambda CDM line, it's basically constant. 
Uh, and what you get is something uh, about uh, 40, 0.42, something like that, and decreasing with redshift. Redshift here is, is from 0 to 0.5. And all these uh, studies uh, about the growth index are important because uh, in the future, we expect to measure uh, the, the growth rate, F, uh, and of course, we can relate F to, to gamma. Uh, for example, uh, this is a Euclid forecast. They assume a fiducial model here, the lambda CDM1, the green line. They expect to, to measure F with 1% accuracy. So having this kind of measurements, it would be easy to, to distinguish between some model of uh, modified gravity, F of R, some, this is some coupled uh, dark energy, dark matter model, and this is some DGP model. So uh, since we start getting good observations on that, it can be very useful to distinguish between the various models of cosmic uh, acceleration. OK, but um, up to now, uh, I just talked about uh, smooth dark energy models, which can fit in, in that linear uh, approximation for, for gamma. And <clears throat> some guys uh, have studied that. Uh, there are also other papers, but this one is compares this one by Dosset and Ishak. Uh, Fiscal review uh, for 2003. Um, they study uh, some uh, modified gravity models and some what they may, may call <clears throat> extreme cases of dark energy models. And they, they find there is little dispersion of the growth index uh, when you actually study these uh, extreme models of uh, dark energy. And in these models, they also uh, study the case uh, where dark energy can cluster. Uh, this is what they find for the growth index. Uh, this is the, the dispersion. Uh, here is the lambda CDM value. Um, here they vary the equation of state. Uh, actually, this is the value at Z1. And they consider constant equation of state, the red dots, and also variable equation of state, the blue dots. Um, the thing here is that they consider um, CPL parameterization for uh, this variable equation of state. And CPL parameterization uh, is good for many purposes, but um, it, it's usually it's very smooth variation with redshift, so you might lose some, some, some freedom to analyze dark energy perturbations if, if you uh, stick with uh, the uh, CPL parameterization. Well, but they, they say the, these differences are, are small. But now let's move to something more general than CPL. So, so this is actually the work. Um, so if you take like a Corazoniti uh, parameterization, it has four parameters. Uh, the value uh, now, uh, the value in, uh, deep in the matter dominated epoch. Um, basically the time of transition and the width of this transition. So here's uh, four, four models uh, using this parameterization. And um, the thing that I hope to show you is that if you have something like this, some sharp, uh, some small width uh, decay at low redshifts and uh, dark energy perturbations can, can be important. So this magenta line actually is, is a good guide for us. Uh, the equation of state is 0.95 today, and, but it was like minus 0.2 in the past and has a, a rapid transition at low redshift. Um, these models are not totally crazy. These uh, parameterizations don't produce a huge difference in, in Hubble parameter, for instance. This is the difference that, uh, against um, lambda CDM. So this magenta line is not, um, for low red shifts around here, is not too much difference. It's less than, than 80%. That's just to say that uh, this is not a, something totally crazy that might affect uh, the background uh, too much. So it's, there's no point to analyze. Um, OK. So if you want to describe dark energy perturbations now, we need um, 
we need to evolve two uh, perturbations, matter and dark energy perturbations. So these are the equations in the Newtonian gauge. Uh, we have to, to, to pay some attention to the pressure perturbation. And here's the CF, or just the sound speed, the effective sound speed, um, which enters in these equations here for uh, dark energy. And then when I evolve these equations, then I compute the, the growth index from, from uh, this expression. So, so let's try to clarify about something about dark energy perturbations. Um, so the key ingredient is this uh, sound speed, effective sound speed computed at the rest frame. Cannot be uh, negative, the squared one. Uh, otherwise, you get the divergent perturbations. Okay, this, uh, you, you may think of non-negligible uh, sound speed. In this case, dark energy basically follows the potential. There is this prefactor here, which is important. But since matters um, go with k square phi, on small scales, this is much more important. So usually people neglect dark energy perturbations. Um, but if you have negligible sound speed for, for dark energy, then uh, dark energy follows the dark matter. Also, there's this prefactor here. This prefactor is important because if you go to, to lambda CDM, if you go to the lambda uh, limit, this goes to zero, so you erase dark energy uh, perturbations. Okay, so in this case, uh, you might have comparable amounts of uh, dark energy and uh, dark matter perturbations. So this is based on uh, fluids, but you can also find scalar field models that might have uh, uh, quite small uh, sound speed, or even uh, you, you can uh, use Lagrange multipliers, uh, multipliers uh, and get exactly uh, no sound speed, okay? So you, you can come up with some, some scalar field model that uh, has this behavior. All right, so the results are here. Um, <clears throat> so for those models I showed you, uh, in this K, I compute uh, CF1 and CF0. So the, um, the case of CF0, which you might think uh, as a smooth dark energy, has some impact, some difference. This is the lambda CDM uh, value. Uh, and here are the different models. It, they are a bit above, but not too far. They, there's not a huge difference here. Okay. Uh, but if you consider no sound speed, things may change a lot. For instance, this magenta line which get around uh, zero redshift, you get minus, 90, minus 0.95. So it would be, uh, for low redshift, quite similar to, to lambda CDM uh, in the expansion history. Um, might have a, a very different uh, growth index. Uh, of course, these differences all uh, diminishes at low uh, redshift, but if you remember uh, what we, we saw from the modified gravity uh, example, we got values around uh, uh, 0.4. Some, uh, that plot was for 0 uh, to 0.5. So in these ranges, it is, it's still a, a, a bit above, but if you go a bit further in redshift, you, you, you also find this, this value. So this, this is already showing us that um, when, when you allow dark energy to, to, to cluster, you might get confused if it's a modified gravity model or some dark energy model in GR. Uh, Professor uh, Jain told us something about this uh, this morning. This is a particular example uh, where you can find this difficulty about uh, distinguishing from GR with some strange kind of matter uh, and a modified gravity. So there's something else. Uh, which is about the parameterizations uh, people use to, to the growth rate. So this is the, the usual form. 
uh, you may consider this as a constant or uh, some uh, redshift dependent <laughs> function. So if I fit um, the, the numerical values with a constant gamma, I get several percent errors in, 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 in the description of f. Uh, if I use this parameterization, which was proposed by the, the authors of uh, Dosset and Nishak, I, I think, uh, things get better, but still I can have several uh, percent, uh, about 2 percent, 1 percent error at low redshift. So um, even uh, if, you, if you try to parameterize um, this, these effects of dark energy clustering, it's difficult to do in the usual way. You, you, you get some, some important error uh, by doing that. Okay. And uh, so here are my conclusions. Uh, as I told you, uh, clustering of dark energy can strongly impact uh, the growth rate. This is, this, uh, maybe it's nice to come back a few slides. This is due to this uh, factor here. So as I showed you, the models, they, they, they have like minus 0.2 uh, at uh, uh, high redshifts and then decay. So this value here is, is large at high redshifts. And then only at very low redshifts, you have this thing approaching minus 1. And then you, you start to raise dark energy perturbations. But if they can live for a long time, in the past, they can impact the, the evolution of matter today. So this is why, uh, let me come back once more. This is why you need some feature like this. Okay. Uh, so this is the how dark energy uh, impacts. Um, distinguishing between modified gravity and clustering dark energy is not straightforward. Uh, there are other examples of this uh, in the literature. This is uh, another one where the growth index may, may, may be more or less the same for both. So if you have some uncertainty uh, in the measurements, it, it's not guaranteed. OK, I got uh, gamma 0.4, so this is uh, modified gravity. It, it, it's not straightforward to, to do that. And of course, usual, as I, I just showed, uh, usual parameterizations for the growth rate are not very accurate for this kind of, of models. OK. Uh, that's it. Thanks.